So you've just got your new Continuum Mini. Perhaps you already have a Continuum. And maybe you have a Kenton controller that you've used with your Continuum, or a BeatStep, or a BeatStep Pro, or some other MIDI device that you've connected up to your Continuum. All those things can be used with a Continuum Mini. But the focus of our discussion today is going to be on how you use the Continuum Mini with the Egan Matrix starting out to optimize your use of the Continuum Mini. Now, you don't need to hook this up to a computer to use it. It only has three jacks. The first one is USB power that might also be connected to your computer through USB. You don't need to connect it to a computer. You could connect up a battery powered USB pack as long as it provides 500 milliamps of power. You're good to go and then all you need to do then is plug a pair of headphones in and you can take your Continue Mini anywhere you want and play it to your heart's content. You may also want to connect the Continue Mini up to a sound system or a mixer. In that case, especially if you have a USB connected to your computer, you might have to deal with ground loops. And if you hear any hum when you're connecting this up, you can get a ground loop eliminator. If you're a Kickstarter member, I believe this comes with your unit. If not, they're inexpensive to buy. And that could save your life if you're hearing hum and you don't know how to get rid of it. The third connector either is a pedal that you can connect up. And to do that, you'll get yourself a little pedal adapter or headphone adapter. Lippo recommends the Hosa MHE100.5 headphone adapter. This lets you go quarter inch TRS to uh, a right angle three and a half millimeter. And it lets you just plug in your pedal and you're good to go. The only thing you need to understand is this jack can either be a pedal or it can also be the connection to your continuum voltage converter or micro CVC if you have it. Now if you want to do that you need to have some kind of a connector that connects up this jack to the MIDI that's going to connect up to your CVC or micro CVC. These things are easy to make um, though you can also get them from Hawken Audio and if you press both of these buttons together on what's called the seven segment display, this is your display panel for the Mini, you'll enter an editing mode that allows you to change various functions of the instrument. Two functions that you're going to want to know about are the dim function. When the Continuum Mini is shipped, it's set to an audio dim of three, a maximum dim, so that you don't plug headphones in by mistake and blow your ears out. That dim can be set to something lower once you use the uh, preset plus and minus buttons, I'd like to just set it to its maximum output zero and control the audio through my mixer. The other function you're going to want to know about, there's other functions here. If you turn the thing over, there's a cheat sheet that tells you all the functions and also the manual go into details on them. This I squared C option is set to zero when you use a pedal. If you want to connect up your CVC, you'll set that to a 1 and then your pedal won't work anymore. This is intended to connect up to your CVC or micro CVC. There's a 2 option, but that's not really used right now. Well, we'll set that to the default pedal for now. If you press both those buttons together, you're back to the preset display and this displays the preset number that you're on. You can increment that with these buttons. <laughs> If you press both of them together, you can fast increment, or if I press the plus first, if I press the minus first, and then both together, you'll fast decrement. You can also press both buttons in the editor mode and get yourself to a function where you can increment the preset category that we'll talk about in a second. There are some other functions here, but for your basic use, that's all you need to know. Uh, the octave buttons are used to go up one or two octaves. You'll see a little dot on the plus sign if the octave up is engaged. If that is off, you're on the bass octave of the instrument. If you go down an octave or two, you'll see the little dot on the minus sign. And if a you're on a preset that uses the rounding function, you'll see a dot under the round. So that's all you need to know to use the instrument. But we want to connect up the Egan matrix to this and show you what your basic functions are there. You'll need that to do three important things. One is to update the firmware. And since this is a new instrument, it's likely it's going to be a firmware release relatively soon. You'll also need the Egan Matrix editor to program your presets. 
The final thing that you'll want the editor for is to load user presets. So you can do that on the front panel, but it's very much easier to do it on the Egan Matrix editor, where you can get to the presets quite quickly and also see the preset names. To connect up anything to the Egan Matrix, you'll always want to connect the devices up to your computer first, especially the Continue Mini, and then bring up the editor. Now when a new firmware release is delivered, you'll download a set of files and one of them is going to be the Continuum Editor application. You're also going to see a directory called Firmware. Those are really the two main items of interest. On the PC, I've created a shortcut here. You can run it directly and so I'll just bring up the editor. It takes a little bit of time to come up. There we have the basic continuum editor, the Egan matrix. It takes a little time and when it's all loaded up, you'll see this version 8.7, that's the initial release. If a new release comes out, that might be 8.8, it might be 9.0, whatever the new release is. The only thing to make sure is when you load a new release, you always bring up the editor that comes with that release. Don't bring up an editor from a previous release to load a new release. Next thing you're going to want to do is know how to update the firmware. So let's go and you'll see a little cog wheel here and there's some options and the one you want to choose is MIDI and global settings. Now the first thing you'll want to do is look at this and make sure that your Continuum device has been recognized and it's showing a blinking little triangle on both the source and the destination. If that's not true, then this blue indicator is likely not going to be on. The blue indicator means your Continuum Mini is connected and recognized. If it's not, you want to make sure that your USB device is properly recognized by your computer, though the USB should be auto-detected by your computer. When you bring this up, it should be auto-detected, your Continuum Mini should be available, and then you'll see an update firmware icon at the bottom here. This is the same procedure if you're loading on the Continuum or the Continuum Mini. If I look at the distribution, I'll go into the firmware directory and I'll see a few files. There are two files here, Continuum Mini 870 in this case, which is the release that comes with the Continuum Mini, Program Only, and then there's also a Continuum Mini 870 update file too. The Program Only file is the main firmware for the instrument. The Update 2 file loads all your presets. Now they might decide that they'll give you a preset only update, in which case you only have to update the file too. If you get a new release, you'll always have to update both of these. How do you update the firmware? Basically all you do is you first select the program only file, you'll drag it right onto that firmware update icon, and when you do that you'll see the little dots coming on your display, it takes a while, and when the firmware is downloaded you'll go right back to showing your preset. After the main firmware file has been uploaded, then you'll take this update to file and you'll do the same thing, drag that to the update firmware icon. That takes a little faster to load. When that's loaded, all your new presets are available and you're good to go. Now when I look at the Egan matrix, there's a little icon here that will have a normal view and a matrix view. If I go to the matrix, you'll see why this is called the Egan matrix. The top part of the matrix are my controls and preset selection. The bottom part is the matrix where I actually create sounds. That's beyond the scope of the video today, but there are plenty of videos out there that talk about how to program the Egan matrix. And for the most part, programming the Continuum Mini is exactly the same as programming the Continuum with a few slight optimizations that you might want to make for the Continuum Mini that I'll have the video on later. Now when everything is loaded, you'll see 16 user presets here. These are presets that are always stored on the machine. These can be easily changed to one of the system presets that come, some 300 plus presets that come with the Continuum Mini. Or they can be set to a preset that you've created or perhaps one you've downloaded on the internet or gotten from the Facebook site. How do you do that? First off, to select a user preset, you just click on it. And when you see I click on something in the matrix, if it's something that affects the continuum, it will change on the display. So I've selected the user preset 16, and the 16 is now displayed. If I go back to 1, 1 should be displayed. The editor is linked with the Continue Mini in lockstep, and you can either control things on the Continue Mini or control things in the editor. Let's select the 16th preset, Celestial Basin. And we want to put one of our own there. 
here I have some presets I've created. Um, here's a Korean Hagum that I'll just take and drag that preset right into the user position. And now that user preset is set to my preset. If I disconnect my Continue Mini, power it off, you'll notice in the editor that little blue icon went off because the Continue Mini isn't recognized now. If I plug this back in, the Continue Mini boots almost instantly. The blue icon comes back. The Continuum editors recognize the Continuum MIDI, and you can see I can select my user presets, and that Hagum I installed there is still there. Now, you can easily install any preset that comes with the Continuum MIDI as one of the 16, because it might be easier for you to select one of those 16. We can set up one of our devices like the BeatStep so that one of my 16 pads, when I press it, will automatically change and set the user preset to the value that I want. We'll show you how to do that later. Well, what if I want a system preset to be loaded into a user preset? The Continuum Mini has 15 categories of presets. This is condensed from the Continuum, which has a few more. You can see there are bass, keyboard looping, morphing, percussion, plucked, sound design, string, synth, vocal, wind, MIDI, which are presets that are meant to connect to different MIDI devices, CVC, which are presets that are meant to control different modulars, be it a Eurorack or a Buchla or different things, drones, which are presets that come on immediately. You don't even press the fingerboard to play them and utilities the utilities are presets that are basic in nature one of them is the empty preset where you can select to have a blank slate to create your own presets or in this release there are a number of basic presets starting presets if you want to use an Egan matrix function like a car plus function or a Harman or a formula delay or a big bank there are some simple examples to start you off on your way now let's say I'll select one of these user presets go into keyboard select I don't know simple organ and then it should be displayed on top here under my current preset perhaps you might have to actually select this twice in certain cases if you select it and it doesn't take just select it again it will likely take then and if I play now you can hear it's an organ sound and you can see the Y width on the Continuum Mini is much much less than the Continuum this is one of the things you have to take into account when you're creating presets for the Mini you can get a difference on Y here in this preset and you can hear on the bottom of Y in this preset there's no tremolo but if I rock to the top I can create presets that do use Y how do I take this preset and set it to a system preset? I can do it on the front panel by selecting the plus on the octave and the plus on the preset together and then hold my octave preset and then select the number that I want to store it to. Let's say I want to store that to the second preset and I'll let go and you can see in the continue mini now that simple organ has been saved to the second user preset slot. I can do something similar by shift clicking if I'm on simple organ. Well, let's set it to another one. Let's set it to say this synchro echo. If I set a system preset and then shift click a user preset that stores it to my user preset slot. And again, if I disconnect my Continue Mini, I can bring it on the road now. I don't need a computer, and those new system presets are set for me. That's the basics of using the Egan Matrix with the Continue Mini. The only other thing we'll talk about right now is how to connect up external devices to your Continue Mini. Let's use the Kenton Kilomix controller as an example. We always want to get out of the editor before we connect something up to it. So I'll get out of the editor. I'll connect up my Kenton controller. The computer's recognized it. And now I'll bring up my editor again. We'll wait until it's recognized. And I see my 8.70 here. The M2X underneath that 8.70 means this is a 2 times DSP processor. So this is equivalent to a L2X continuum. I'll go in to Kenton settings. 
my Kenton I've labeled as gain, rev mix, one, two, three, four, gen one, gen two, and round. The default settings may not be that, so I can go in here and change them to gain. I'll change this to rev mix. I'll change this to one, two, three, four, gen one, gen two. That's all I need for now. And I've set my Kenton up. I can go in to MIDI and global settings. I see my Kenton is connected. The Kenton is automatically detected by the Egan matrix. And now if I go into a preset that uses a barrel, I can either change that barrel with my mouse. I can go in to my Kenton and change that barrel. I can also go into my front panel display and bring up barrel one and change that as well. So you don't need any device to change your barrels on the Continue Mini. The only thing you should be aware of is the Continue Mini has a limited number of configuration options versus the Egan Matrix Editor. The Continue Mini does not allow you to set the gens, for example. The Continue Mini also has a limited number of pedal options. Remember, there's only one pedal on the Continue Mini. You can set this second pedal to anything you like. It won't do anything. Um, there's a good number more options than are supported on the Continue Mini. If I go into my editor, I can set my pedals from 1 to 7. They're going to equate to one of these options. Here if I set this to 2, you'll see it sets to pedal 2. And if I set this to an option that's not supported, like Gen 1, it'll set it to pedal 6. So if you set a pedal to a value the Continue Mini doesn't understand, it defaults it to the uh, sustain, I believe. What if we want to connect up the BeatStep Pro? We'll do a similar operation. I'll go out of my editor. I'll set my beat step up. I'll disconnect my other devices. I'll connect up my beat step. I'll bring up the editor again. And now I'll go back into MIDI and global settings. Except for the Kenton, all other MIDI devices that you want to connect up to the Egan matrix, you're going to want to use one of these two external MIDI inputs, external one or external two. These have three filtering options. This is new for the 8.7 release. I can either select a music data filter for MIDI. Music data would be MIDI data that controls your notes, your pitch bend, or you can set it to config data, which is MIDI data that controls preset selection and other internal Egan matrix functions. And you could set it to all data, which is everything. So I'll set this to all data. I want to use the source because I want to connect up a controller here. And since this is a USB device that's auto detected, I should be able to select on this unconnected box here and see the MIDI devices that are connected. Obviously, my continuum is connected. Here's my Arturia BeatStep Pro. I don't want the MIDI part of it. I want the Pro itself. So now I'm connected as an input and now I can go to my beat step and I've done a few things here. The dials, as you can see, I've set up so that they control the barrels and the gens. There's enough of them to control virtually any parameter I want. Um, I've set up the pads, as you can see, that when I press them, I will select one of my 16 user presets. And there's also on the Pro, uh, 16 other buttons here that I programmed so that if I select one, it will change to the category I want. And then on the last two, I can increment presets in that category and decrement presets in that category, which basically lets me use the BeatStep Pro to do almost anything I need to do in the editor, at least the top part, for control. Now we'll make the BeatStep Pro configuration available to anyone that wants it. Also, if you have a BeatStep and not the Pro, you can do similar things. You can set up your 16 pads to select a user preset, and these dials can control barrels or gins, whatever you like. It would be connected the same way as the Pro. You just select BeatStep instead of BeatStep Pro. So there you go. I think that's about all you need to know right now to connect up your MIDI devices, to connect up a Kenton. Next time, we'll go into more detail and talk about how do you connect up the Continuum so your Continuum can control your Continuum Mini. Uh, the Continuum Mini also can control the Continuum. Also, we'll talk about how to connect up uh, standard MIDI keyboards, the Linstrument MPE devices like 
that and the Roly, an X-Key 37. I'll go through the normal devices that a lot of people use with the Continuum. They all will work with the Continuum Mini.